Hello, welcome to this episode of the Martial Truth. Martial arts in movies. <clears throat> One of my students suggested I do a podcast, go a little bit lighter on a topic, um, movies and the martial arts. Um, I thought it might be a little fun, and then I was thinking about how I want to approach it, and one of the things I thought about is maybe bring up some movies that you might not have seen or know about that contain martial arts, some of them early movies um, with some people in it. You might, not, you might be surprised that actually uh, demonstrate some martial arts in the movie, um, and then we'll talk about some, some other things. So, so for myself, I started in 79 in martial arts, um, just means I'm old. Um, so, you know, again, the Bruce Lee craze was still going on, um, you know, when his movies first came out, it was like, you know, an explosion going off, before you know it, you had an influx in this country of Chinese-made martial arts movies, I mean, you can run through, you know, a million of them, um, many of them we've seen, all right, um, you know, now we look at them, and we look on them, you know, it's kind of funny and nostalgic, but, <clears throat> and then, you know, the, the movies continue to progress, you know, and also, you know, different things, um, you know, then we had the Kung Fu TV series, which wasn't a movie, but again, brought that into the mainstream, um, you know, so you had, you had movies affecting what people wanted to do, so you had, you know, like the Bruce Lee movies, everybody wanted to learn Kung Fu, and before you know it, you had a lot of Kung Fu schools po popping up, and you began began to see this, you know. And then, um, you know, we had the Karate Kid movie come out with Ralph, Ralph Macchio and uh, Pat Morita, um, which was great for us people. I practiced traditional karate. It showed karate's philosophical side. The techniques it showed, I mean, the Morita techniques, which Fumio Demura did the, um, you know, stunt work for that, um, were pretty good, were pretty good. Um, but some of it was kind of silly, right? It didn't really show the true techniques of Okinawan karate. Um, but it showed a philosophical way in the way, you know, we should think as martial artists, which is not to espouse violence, but, you know, to always look for another way to settle things, and violence should be the last resort. So that was a good, good thing that happened because uh, it brought people into our schools, right? Uh, kids want to learn karate, right? So, you know, it shows you how an, a movie can influence um, what it is we do, right? You know, then you had the ninja craze, right? You had the ninja craze, show Kasugi and these different guys making ninja movies, Michael Dudikoff, American Ninja, all right? And, you know, those movies, again, fun, kind of goofy, you know, for their time, they're okay. Now we watch and we kind of roll our eyes, right? Um, but again, you know, all of a sudden now there were ninja schools popping up, you know, okay, whatever. But they were popping up and people wanted to be a ninja. Hell, I wanted to be a ninja. I thought it was very cool that the whole ninjutsu stuff, right? But uh, reality won out and I stuck with more uh, serious martial arts, okay? Um, so, so again, um, the movies have had a tremendous influence on martial arts um, and some people don't even realize how it's had. I mean, now we don't think about it because virtually every action movie has some type of martial arts in it. Um, whether it be an empty hand fight scene, a weapons fight scene. I mean, literally, um, you're not seeing the simple fisticuffs you would see like in uh, the old style uh, movies of the 30s, 40s, and 50s, and 60s. You're seeing very sophisticated fight scenes put together by high-level stunt teams, um, whether it's John Wick, okay, or uh, any of the Jason Statham movies, okay, the Bourne series. You know, and all these things have an effect on martial arts. And in my opinion, I think it's a good effect. I think uh, they show more sophisticated techniques, a more serious level of ability in those movies. You know, whether it's the stuntman or the actor doing it, it makes no difference. Um, but it gives us an idea of the work that has to go in to actually pull off one of these uh, seriously choreographed fight scenes. All right. And, you know, if you watch any of the making of some of these movies, you'll see there's, you know, Slips happen all the time. People get actually hit. It's just the nature of the beast. It's no different than us training in the dojo where, you know, we try not to train where people get hurt, but every once in a while, you know, a slip, a mistake happens and someone gets hit or whatever. So, um, 
you know, it's it's important to put these things in context, though, that these are movies. All right, um, it's not real life. There's nothing about it's real life. They're designed to entertain us, and that's great because they do entertain them. I love movies. I'm a big movie guy. Um, I love martial arts movies. Um, you know, uh, my favorite though are ones that, um, for me, my favorite martial arts movies. Besides some of the modern ones, like I love the John Wick movies. All right, you know, they're not necessarily realistic. Okay, but they're a lot of fun. And uh, for myself, um, I like a fun martial arts movies, like Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Okay, one of my favorites. All right, Hero with Jet Li, another one. Uh, bodyguards and assassin um we can just run down a bunch of the donnie yen movies the first it man movie is great um you know uh i think kuro obi is another one that's very good that uh showcases karate skills um so you know they're very good um you know they're a lot of fun to watch uh and again like i don't mind the chinese wire work you know some of the guys are like oh that's so fake and you know, listen I, uh, I go to a movie to escape. If I want reality, like I was a, a police officer for 22 years, I used to say, if I want reality, I go to work, all right? I want to enjoy a movie. I want to have fun, okay? I'm not, it doesn't have to be 100% real martial arts, okay? As long as it's enjoyable and the fight scene's exciting, I think, um, I think I can suspend belief for a while and just enjoy the actual show uh, that I'm watching, all right? So let's talk about some movies that maybe you haven't heard of or seen, especially um, you younger ones. So James Cagney is a very famous movie actor from the 30s and 40s, starred in movies like Public Enemy, all right? Um, uh, he also played George M. Cohan in Yankee Doodle Dandy. So these older actors were very, very well trained. James Cagney was a tap dancer. He could sing, all right? He could play a tough guy. He played in westerns, right? So he played in all kinds of movies. Um, but one of the movies he made was a movie called Blood on the Sun, which came out in the early 1940s, all right? And he plays a reporter in Japan that gets wind of the Japanese are planning some type of attack. Um, you know, so for my woke friends, um, you know, you might not want to watch this movie, okay? Because, again, the Japanese are portrayed as caricatures. They're evil, right? It's white actors playing some of the Japanese, all right? So if you're going to get all butthurt and offended by that, don't watch it, okay? But if you like me, and I watch things in the context and the times they were made, and I don't get all butthurt over certain things, um, you might enjoy this movie. Um, the movie opens up with a scene where Cagney is actually practicing judo. And from what I understand, Cagney was a brown belt or a black belt in judo, which think about the times, the early 30s, 40s, okay? Um, and it starts with him doing some throws on someone um, in a judo dojo. It looks like it's probably supposed to be the Kodokan. Um, and then from there, it goes into the story. And uh, throughout the movie, James Cagney, the Japanese are after him, and he has to fight them off. And throughout the movie, you'll see Cagney using a combination of American fisticuffs, boxing, a little bit of wrestling, and judo. And it's very fascinating to watch some of the fight scenes and how Cagney does certain things. Um, there's joint locking. There's throws. Um, you know, he uses objects uh, in the room. Um, the movie's a lot of fun. You know, if again, you, you know, we're talking the 1940s, um, but... The movie's fun, and if you want to see one of the earliest movies where they actually use martial arts, well, this is one of them, okay? Um, so Cagney, like I said, plays a reporter. He's fighting the Japanese. Um, you know, in one scene, he wants to be able to use the guy's clothing, so he, 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 he snaps his jacket apart so he can now grab and use it to throw him and stuff. And, uh, you know, it's, it's just it's a lot of fun. And if you want to see, like I said, a very early movie where there's a bunch of martial arts in it, um, this, is, this is it. All right. You could also check out the early Mr. Moto movies with Peter Lorre. 
playing Mr. Moto, the detective. Um, you'll see in those movies that Mr. Moto on occasion does some jiu-jitsu or judo techniques. All right, so that's kind of fun to see. Again, older movies, 30s, 40s, black and white. All right, but just to see how martial arts was already influencing film um, that early. Okay, we're talking now, uh, you know, almost 100 years ago. Okay, so, uh, you know, again, a lot of fun. Um, to see that kind of stuff and to see some of the early techniques they were they were doing on film, all right. Um, another movie that's um, not just has some martial arts in it, and the martial arts in it are very brief, but it's pretty cool the way they do it, all right. Um, but the movie itself is a great movie. I mean, this is a great, great movie, all right. Um, it's called Bad Day at Black Rock with Spencer Tracy. Uh, Robert Ryan's in it, um, uh, Walter Houston, I believe. Um, you have Ernest Borgnine and James Coburn playing the, the heavies, the bad guys, all right? Robin Ryan plays a bad guy. Um, so it's just a lot of uh, big stars in it. The story's fantastic. It basically, a uh, simple Cliff Notes version is Spencer Tracy, who's in World War II, loses an arm, so he only has one arm. Um, the guy that saves his life is a Japanese American soldier and who was issued a medal. And Spencer Tracy comes back to the United States and he wants to give the Japanese soldier's father his medal. So he comes to this small town out in the middle of nowhere to return to give the father the son's medal, and he can't find the father. And then before you know it, he realized something's not right with this town. And where is the father? What happened to the father? Okay. And why are they so adamant about getting rid of Spencer Tracy? Why do they think he should get out? And there's only one fight scene in it, um, but it's a good one. And Spencer Tracy, remember, only has one arm. And let's just say he uses uh, jujitsu, okay, in a diner scene. Um, but again, um, for martial artists, it's worth it to see the one fight scene. It's very brief, but it's very, it's very good, okay? But also, like I said, the movie's a fantastic movie. So it's interesting to see how they tie in this um, one-armed man fighting with jiu-jitsu, okay, into the whole, uh, the whole movie itself, all right? And how, uh, just how great this movie is. I mean, it's, it's fantastic, all right? You're wondering, you know, what happened to the father, why is this town, why is everybody in this town so scared of Spencer Tracy, all right? And it's just, uh, it's a really, really good movie. Um, Blood on the Sun with Jimmy Cagney. Uh, if you have Amazon Prime, I believe it's on Amazon Prime for free. Um, Bad Day at Black Rock, I'm not sure if that's on Amazon Prime, but um, you might be able to rent it. I don't think it's that expensive. This movie, I think, the, I think Bad Day at Black Rock was made in the 1950s. All right, so that's a good one. And Mr. Moto, those movies I'm pretty sure you could probably see on Amazon for free also. And again, you just want to check them out just to see what, you know, what was going on and how they, how they use martial arts in these uh, old-time movies back then. It's just kind of fascinating. And to see how it's progressed to now the, the John Wick, the John Wick-style movie where the, the fight scenes are so, you know, so choreographed and everything is so put together, right? Um, so it just makes for an interesting thing to see. And you'll, you'll see, like, in The Bad Day at Black Rock, um, the fight scene's fairly realistic. It's, it's kept very simple and it's very realistic. And it's, you know, it's the same with the Jimmy Cagney ones. Um, they're not um, choreographed where everything's so clean and perfect. It looks a little rough. It looks like they're, they're almost kind of fighting, right? Which, which makes it kind of interesting, right? And the fact that Jimmy Cagney was such a big movie star, I mean... For, our, for people out of watching this that don't know who Jimmy Cagney is, I mean, Jimmy Cagney was, you know, he was the Tom Cruise of his day. I mean, he was a massive, massive movie star, all right? Um, so just keep that in mind when you're watching it, okay? Um, so, so then we have those, and then um, I'm a big fan of uh, the foreign martial arts movies, and especially the Japanese, all right? Um, I'm a huge fan of Kurosawa. All right. Um, I first got turned on to Kurosawa uh, when I was young. Um, the Eighth Street Playhouse in Greenwich Village, Manhattan. Don't even know if it's still there, but they used to do uh, a month-long samurai film festival. And I would go, and at the time was my girlfriend, now my wife, right? She'd go with me. 
And we'd see movies like Yojimbo, Sanjuro, the Samurai Trilogy, uh, which is the story of Miyamoto Musashi, Harakiri, um, you know, I mean, the list just goes, goes on and on. Um, and, you know, when I first saw those movies and I saw the sword choreography, I was just like blown away, okay? And, uh, you know, Toshiro Mifune is considered like the John Wayne of Japan. Like, that's how famous he is. Uh, you know, he, he's passed away now, but he had, a, he had a serious connection to the Sugino Dojo and Katori Shinto, of which I'm a member, all right? So it's, I find it fascinating that when I watch a movie like Yojimbo and I see some of the Katori techniques. And it's just, it's just great. And uh, Sanjuro too. Uh, the final fight scene in Sanjuro between um, Mifune and Tatsuya Nakadai is classic. I mean, the tension builds up and there's just an explosion uh, of action. Um, you know, so my, my teacher, Sugino Yukihiro, um, was on the set helping his father choreograph a lot of the Kurosawa movies um, and a lot of the Chimbara movies at that time. So we were lucky enough one year, um, Sugino Sensei came in, he attended my camp in New Jersey, and I brought a DVD player and a DVD of Yojimbo. And we had a Japanese translator, and we all sat and watched it with Sugino Sensei. And during the movie, he was telling us stories of things that were going on on the set while um, they were filming it. So it was great for a guy like me that's into movies and martial arts. Here I have Sugino Sensei, who was there when they were filming the movie, um, telling us stories about, you know, it took a while for Mufune Sensei to grasp this technique. This one was a little harder, and going back and forth with different things. And then at the end, you know, Sugino Sensei said to me, he says, Michael, I haven't watched that movie in 30 years. He goes, This was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun watching it and remembering and sharing the stories with you guys. And for us, it was fantastic. I mean, how often do you get a chance to watch a classic Kurosawa movie with someone who was on the set that was assisting in the fight choreography? The answer is that doesn't happen too often. So like I tell people all the time, I've been very blessed in my martial arts career. I've um, you know, been allowed to go places and see things and um, experience things that not everybody else gets to experience. So that was, was absolutely fantastic. Um, so I highly recommend all the Kurosawa movies. Um, you know, the Samurai Trilogy by Inagaki is fantastic. Um, again, is it 100% a realistic retelling of the Musashi story? No, it's based on Eiji Yoshikawa's book, Musashi, which is about that thick and hardcover, all right? Um, it's a huge book, very enjoyable, all right? A lot of fun, okay? Um, but, so it's kind of based on that. So there's some, that, some stuff with the sword, fight in, sword fights in it. It's fantastic. Um, you get to see um, Musashi, played by, again, Toshiro Mufuni, fight someone armed with a Kasaragama. Um, you see him fighting multiple opponents. Um, obviously, he fights Sasaki Kojiro at the end with the Bodor. Um, very exciting movie in color. So, um, you know, if some of you have a problem watching black and white, that one's in color. Um, and again, just... Just fantastic, all right? Um, I recommend a lot of the Tatsuya Nakadai movies. Um, those also are very, very good. Um, you know, there's some new Shambara movies like um, uh, 13 Assassins, which is, is great. Um, there's a bunch of other ones um, that, you know, some of them, are, you, like I said, are available on Netflix, some of them are available on Amazon. So if you have those services, you can watch them, all right? And you should check them out. And um, I wanted to mention another Mufune Kurosawa movie, which is called Redbeard, okay? Redbeard, um, black and white. Um, again, has a, only has really one fight scene in it. It's a jujitsu fight scene, okay? And Mufune plays a doctor um, who has a red beard, okay? Um, the premise of the movie is a young doctor graduates from the big medical university in Tokyo during samurai times. And this young doctor thinks he should be treating people like the Shogun. But instead, he's sent to this country doctor, Mufune, out in the middle of nowhere. And, you know, he's sent really to learn. Because Mufune has so much experience as a doctor. He's treating all kinds of people, right? So the, he, he, this guy is sent to learn. And also, I think, to learn some humility. And um, so, again, a great movie. 
um, subtitles, all right? Um, you know, so if you have a problem with subtitles, a lot of these movies, you're probably not going to watch, it, all right? But, you know, live a little. Try some subtitle movies. You might discover there's a, a whole other crop of movies out there that you might decide you want to watch uh, from far, foreign filmmakers, okay? Um, in the movie, Mafune faces down five or six guys um, when he tries to help a prostitute who's very sick, and he says she has to go to the clinic or she'll die. The madam says she's not going anywhere. She has to make money for me. Mufuni basically says, it's not your decision. She's going. She gets five or six thugs to basically beat up Mufune, and Mufune takes them apart with jiu-jitsu. Pretty realistic fight scene. Again, looks like a real fight. Doesn't look like a highly choreographed, polished uh, dance. It's the techniques of bang, bang, and people are hurt. Um, you know, so that's, that's a good movie. And again, the thing to keep in mind, it's not just a great fight scene. It's a great movie. Like Redbeard is a great movie. Um, if you like movies, if you like good stories, Redbeard is a great movie. Um, you know, another early uh, Kurosawa movie is uh, Sanshiro Sagata, which is based on the founding of Judo. All right. Um, so there's some judo, judo stuff that happens in that movie. Um, it's kind of interesting to see. That's an early one. That's an early Kurosawa movie. Um, but again, if you're a martial artist and you like martial arts movies, you should check some of these ones out that maybe you haven't seen. You know, if all you've seen is more of the modern martial arts movies, well, give some of these a try. Um, you know, I think uh, if you give some of them a try, you, you might find them interesting. And I'll mention another one that's a little more modern, 1970s, Charles Bronson. Charles Bronson in The Mechanic. Uh, there's a great karate fight scene in that with Takuboto sensei. And uh, Charles Bronson goes to a dojo and some young upstart is, has his own ideas of what martial arts should be, which is kind of just fighting and there's no respect. And uh, the senior Japanese sensei, Takuboto, has to teach him a physical lesson. Um, so that's another movie that has a, a very interesting fight scene in it, all right? And, you know, if you go through different, you know, times with movies, you'll see the fight scenes change and everything. But again, um, it's just something, again, we always talk about such serious topics here. Um, you know, I thought we'd just throw something a little bit different in, um, you know, and uh, have some fun with it and maybe give you some suggestions about some movies you might want to check out that maybe you never heard of. All right. So uh, hope you've enjoyed this one. Um, we've got some interesting things coming up um, in the near future. Going to be interviewing Sensei Ruff Smith, talking about his book, Principal Based Training, and some other books that he's written. We're also going to be having an interview with Andreas Quas Sensei on his new book on Bojitsu, probably uh, end of March, okay, middle of March. All right. So uh, we have some cool things coming up. And uh, plan on doing some other uh, cool things in the very near future with the channel. All right. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, please click that like button. Very important you click it. Subscribe. Pass the word. Spread the word. All right. Consider becoming a member. All right. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. All right. Maybe I'll see you at the movies. Take care. Bye.